So it's just under a year now since I got rid of my Hilleberg solo tent. And I got loads of messages at the time saying, don't sell it, you'll regret it. And it's nearly 12 months have passed and I've succumbed and bought another Hilleberg. So the Hilleberg used to be my go-to tent for really adverse weather conditions. And I've been out quite a number of times since where um, I've not been 100% confident in whatever tent I've been in. I've had one tent collapse on us in the Lake District. I've had shelters dripping in water and I've spent the odd hour or two holding tent poles up to make sure they don't cave in. So everyone that said I'd regret getting rid of the Solo, you were sort of right. I don't actually regret getting rid of that tent, but I do regret not replacing it with a bigger Hilleberg. I'll show you around it in a minute and I'll tell you why I've picked this particular tent. So this is the Hilleberg Nalo 3. I've got my lovely wife to thank for draining our bank account and buying me this for my birthday. To be fair, I've been going on about it for months. I think she was sick of me whinging. So I've been searching for ages for a tent that would give me confidence when it came to the more adverse weather conditions. I've had two Hillebergs before and both of them have never let me down. You can get an expedition tent that is reasonably lightweight that will take anything that the UK can throw at it anyway. So you may have noticed over the last 12 months or so, I've been appreciating tents with a little bit more space in them. Oh, oh, oh. And this certainly fits that criteria. This is the Hilleberg Nalo 3. Yes, a three person tent. Um, I had been looking at getting a two person tent. The obvious choice after the Hilleberg Solo was something like an Alak or a Steiker, which is um, a geodesic tent. Um, they're really, really solid bits of kit, but they do weigh quite a lot. Um, I think one of them's 3.4 kilos or something, the other one's over four kilos, which was a little bit more than I wanted to carry. So I started looking at tunnel tents. So the tunnel tents, like the Nalo, Namach, they have less pole structure and they aren't freestanding, but um, you get a lot of tent for a lot less weight. Oh, Joe will like this, look. It's got a washing line. So after a lot of deliberation, I settled on the Nalo 2, actually. I've spoken to a lot of people, um, Dan Jones, Mark Jones, they own the Nalo 2s. Um, and they highly recommend them. They've had them in some real nasty conditions. So that is what I decided I was going to get. And then I saw um, some videos. Is it Norwegian Explorer? Yeah, Norwegian Explorer. So he takes his Nalo in some pretty rough stuff. And he's got the Nalo 3. And normally I think that a three-person tent would be a little bit too heavy and bulky. But... The three person version of this is only 200 grams heavier than the two person. So I thought for 200 grams, it's a no brainer to have that extra space. Obviously when it comes to finding a footprint to camp on, I'm going to be a little bit more restricted, but I'm just loving, you know, this. I could like, if I was agile, I could play Twister in this. I decided to get the footprint as well which I don't actually think is worth the money. It's about 125 pound just for the footprint. Um, but this is, I promise, <laughs> my last um, proper four season winter purchase. Um, I can't see me, you know, swapping this tent for, for another one when it comes to the, the hardcore stuff now anyway. I can kneel up in it. There's plenty of room to get changed and stuff like that. Um, and another reason I went for the three person is I want to drag our lass up into the mountains. I know she's, she's not mega keen, um, but she, she does have a dabble every now and again. But when she does, she likes to be comfortable. She likes to have a, a wide sleeping pad like me. Um, she likes to be able to sit up. She likes to be able to get 
dressed. And something like this is ideal for that. And we've also got the, the security of knowing that this tent is not going to let us down. As long as you pitch them correctly, obviously. This is the first time I've pitched a tent. I've not had a chance to, to get it out yet. Um, I got the footprint separately. So I waited for that to come. Um, very impressed so far. Loving the space. 2.6 kilos, which is not ultra light, but for an expedition tent um, of this size, it is really lightweight. I'm happy to carry that. You, we're talking some one and two person Van Goghs, Banshees and stuff that are that kind of weight. Packs down really small as well. Obviously, this isn't going to be me all year round tent. It is overkill for most stuff. But um, if I'm planning on going out and I'm expecting um, some rough conditions on some of the summits, especially, um, this is what I'm going to take. So in comparison to the Hilleberg Solar, I think that's 2.4 kilos. Um, so this is 200 grams heavier, I think. And it's a no brainer for me. This is a palace. Um, don't get me wrong, the Solo is still, it's a beast of a tent. It's rock solid, um, packs down pretty small. It's, a, it's the go-to, it's got a small footprint, which is a, appeals to a lot of wild campers. So I see why so many people have them. And that was why I wanted one originally. But living in it, especially in, in winter when you're in your tent, 14, 16 hours. Um, it's not the most comfortable place to be, whereas this um, is going to be much more comfortable for me. This entrance is huge. There's even room to sit in the vestibule so I can take my wet gear off. Perfect for what I want now anyway. Like a marquee in it. So if you haven't heard of Hilleberg, they are pretty overkill for most conditions in the UK. They're, they're built for expeditions. These have survived the Arctic and Everest. Everything's robust. Metal wings for your pegs to go through. Super strong reinforced pole sleeves. The material has got oh, the tear strength on it. You can't tear it with your hands. So yeah, do I regret selling my Hilleberg solo? Not one bit. Do I regret not replacing it before I got rid of it? Yeah, I do. Most people do not need anything like this. So I don't recommend you go out and buy one unless you really want to go camping in some mega rubbish conditions like I do. Anyway, that's just a quick look at my new nasty weather tent. Um, I hope to show you it in some rougher conditions very soon. <laughs>